Hello everyone, this is Bookie Youssef and I'm sharing this PowerPoint recording as part of the Exploring Online Learning Improves an AP Strategies and Safeguarding session that took place on Friday the 3rd of April 2020. This PowerPoint overview will share some of the strategies that we put in place to make sure that the distance learning works for our learners. Weeks before UK schools were closed due to the pandemic, staff spent time considering which platforms would be best for our learners. My head teacher narrowed this list down to the five that you can see on the screen. And this list included one of my favourites, Shobi, because it's so easy to use on iPads and to give feedback to students. I suggested that we use Google Classroom because we already had Google Suites for education and it was easier to stay with what we were familiar with, even though it wasn't being extensively used. Google Classroom was then set up by a number member of the leadership team and ensured that all our staff and students were in the Google Classroom system. Two weeks before school closures, we started to prepare and upload learning resources into the subject areas within Google Classroom so that we had things in place for remote learning. Myself and another member of the leadership team were on hand to support staff that did not know how to upload learning resources onto Google Classroom. This also included guidance on how to assign resources to the correct students and how to ensure that students could either view or edit items that have been provided. If you are new to using Google Classroom, then Google Teach From Home Toolkit. You will be able to download this guide and it will show you how you can work through the six different aspects that you can see on the screen. In addition to this, I started to curate a home learning pack. The rationale behind this is that some of our learners need to have physical learning resources and will struggle to learn with materials that are only being shared online. Through my whole school responsibility of teaching and learning, I was able to view what was in the learning assignments issued to our students in order to quality assure it. I requested to be added to every subject's Google Classroom as it was the easiest way to review the learning materials because as soon as they were uploaded, I received email notifications. What quickly became apparent were that a large number of worksheets, mainly PDFs, were being uploaded into Google Classroom, yet students could not write on them to demonstrate their learning. Specific support was then provided in the following ways. Model the use of Google Docs and Google Form. Using these type of documents also made it easy to see when work was being done because it isn't always easy to see on Google Classroom whether or not students are completing work unless they hand it in, which isn't always the case. Modelling also included the use of online tutorials, which demonstrated the steps. Refinement of learning instructions for unclear or multi-step learning instructions, so that it was absolutely clear about what the learners had to do. This is especially important when asynchronous lessons occur without the teacher being on hand to clarify learning points that are not understood. And co-create, where together we adapt and create resources using cut and paste to chunk the learning and also to make it possible for students to include their answers within the document. My head teacher reminds us that our learners are with us for a reason. Therefore, we have to make this work for them and be vigilant for those that are struggling to engage with this way of learning. Behind the scenes, my head teacher reviews how well students could access and engage with the learning to help us triangulate different aspects to make the distance learning a successful endeavour. As soon as school closed, a rotor was drawn up 
for key staff to contact the families and their children. It had to be key staff from a safeguarding perspective as no one else could contact parents, carers and guardians directly. Contact was made primarily to see how they were coping with the lockdown and also to ensure there was regular communication from the school. Provisional online timetables were also drawn up. As part of the daily Zoom meetings in the morning and afternoon, we commented on how well students responded to the work set on Google Classroom and how well they engaged with Google Meet lessons. Having learning resources on Google Classroom has meant that some students were able to start learning and had their choice in what they did. Interestingly, there were some that preferred the remote access but did not initially engage with live video conference lessons. We also had to ensure that we were implementing the e-safety code of conduct, such as filming in a suitable location and only having professional conversations. Every time we connect with a student using Google Classroom, Google Meet or email, staff were required to update a Google form. This forms evidence of learning taking place or any issues that have occurred. There is also a day in which we have time to provide feedback for work that has been submitted by our student. Students can also send photos of projects they are working on, such as cooking, art, etc., to the key staff members only, which are then later added to their folders of work which have been submitted. During the online chat comments on Friday, I should have clarified that we will collate evidence of learning as part of our informal formative assessments undertaken to show where students are. And it is this process that we will review during the first half of the summer term. Learning platforms like MathsWatch, Tatamai and Kahoot are examples of powerful assessment tools that can be used in this regard. Once a week on Fridays, subject leads provide an overview of the whole week and share how students have initially engaged with their distance learning. At this early stage, we are not expecting students to undertake a full lesson if it is too much of an adjustment at this moment in time. We are looking to see whether they are on time for the scheduled lesson, whether they can access the learning resources and whether they understand what they have been asked to complete. After a day or two, we found that many were ready to engage with the online learning. In spite of the complete upheaval in the ways we are continuing with student learning, I think the school closures provide us with a few opportunities. I feel that a review of the six questions above will help alternative provision and special schools as they continue with or enhance the remote learning experience for students that will struggle to learn on site when the lockdown is no longer imposed. Please feel free to contact me through Twitter if you have any particular questions or queries about the use of Google Classroom as part of your distance learning setup. Thank you very much for listening.